Welcome to Shortview Trading. My name is Chris Swatling. I'm the CEO and Chief Market Strategist of Longview Economics and Shortview Trading. And this is your morning market hit for Monday, 15th of January. What matters for markets on a one to two week basis? If you're a swing trader of equity index futures like S&P 500 futures, NASDAQ futures, DAX, FTSE futures, what do you need to look at? What do you need to think about? How should you go about trading the market either long or short on that one to two week time frame? That's what we're going to dig into in this video. And the first thing we need to think about is how's this market behaving? Because if you look at the S&P 500 in the chart we're putting up in front of you now, you can see that the market's been consolidating over the course of the last month. Literally since the 15th, 18th of December, it's been trading sideways in a wide range of about 140 S&P 500 points, 3% that is of the S&P 500. It's been trading in a wide range of 4,700 at the lower end, up to 4,840 odd at the upper end. So after a very strong November and December when the market rallied aggressively, it's been consolidating its gains treading water, wondering in which direction it's going to break out from here. And indeed, that's pretty similar across a range of equity indices. If you look around the world, look at the Nasdaq 100, the key tech barometer, similarly consolidating its gains since mid-December. Equally, over in Europe, if you look at the DAX, as the chart we're putting up in front of you now, or indeed you look at the broader European index, it's the same message, a consolidation, a range-bound move, perhaps a very modest giving back of those gains, but essentially pretty much sideways over the last few weeks. And indeed, that message is compounded when you think that in the first trading week of January, first trading week of the year, the US was pretty weak. But actually, last week, it bounced pretty nicely, as you can see in the chart we're putting up in front of you now of US weekly performance of key indices. Tech and the Philly Sox, NASDAQ 100, leading the charge, bouncing the most after marked weakness in the first week of January with that reinforcing that idea of consolidation sideways trading. So the key question is, when will the indices break out of these ranges and in which direction will they break out? To the upside or to the downside? Are they indeed rolling over after those strong gains or are they just treading water, preparing for the next move higher? And to judge that, we use a variety of tools. And one of the key ones is how the short-term models are behaving and evolving. Is it the case that as the consolidation is playing out, the short-term models are moving from sell, which is where they were in the second half of December, back on to buy? Or is it they're staying on sell even though that consolidation is underway? That is a critical first factor that we look at as we think about whether or not it's going to break out to the upside or downside. And indeed, if you take the put to call ratio that we're putting up in front of you now, you can see that this index, this indicator, this model, this put to call ratio was on sell in mid-December as the market started their consolidation phase. And since then, it's worked off the low level of puts in the market. Indeed, there's been a lot of put buying, a lot of buying of downside protection. That's what puts are. Traders buy them when they want to hedge their portfolio against downside risk because they're worried about giving up gains. But of course, when you buy puts, you're effectively selling the market. Someone out there has to sell the market to square their position. And in that respect, what's encouraging is how this model's unwound from sell to buy over the last few weeks, and the market's traded sideways. As we said, the S&P 500 has been range bound. So that's one of the models giving a pretty encouraging message about a breakout to the upside. Equally, if, to, if you look at the technical state of the equity market. It was very overbought, as you can see on our technical scoring system we're putting in front of you now. This is a short-term technical scoring system that adds together a number of key technical indicators, many of which I'm sure you'll be familiar with, things like the RSI. So several inputs make up this model. As you can see in December, it was on sell. Now it's unwound that as of the beginning of last week, when we talked about it in last week's video, it had moved back on to buy. So the market's unwound, it's overbought position. It's put on a lot of downside protection, and all of that's pretty encouraging given that it's tracked sideways as it's been doing that, as it's been unwinding those excessive signals on sell and getting those models back on to buy. So it's those type of factors that we look at each and every day in the RAG Trader when we think about our one to two week recommendation on equity index futures, typically on the S&P 500 futures, whether to be long or short, what entry level, how to go about implementing the trade. That's all the sort of things we discuss every day, along with updates on all our key short-term models 
with which there are many, uh, that, those two are just a, a couple of examples. And that all comes out in the, in the Rag Trader every morning around 9 a.m. London time, every single business day of the year. So if you're interested in a free trial, please click on the link below and we'd gladly send you the Rag Trader for free for a bunch of trading sessions with no credit card details required. We just need your name and email address and then we'll send you that free trial of the Rag Trader. So what are we watching this week? Well, there's a bunch of key themes. Davos is underway, so the great and good are up in the mountains in Switzerland. There's a number of key speeches that are coming out from there, and there'll be a number of panels and maybe some snippets from many of the different policymakers and leaders across the globe of, of key businesses. So we'll be watching that closely. On top of that, there's the continuation of US earnings season. This is critical. It kicked off in earnest with the banks last Friday. Major banks, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, City. This week, we've got a couple of the big investment banks, Morgan Stanley and Goldman's, a bunch of other banks and a bunch of other stocks reporting over the course of this week. That'll be watched closely. And then there's a whole bunch of other US data, sort of not the most important, but still pretty important. There's a theme for housing this week. The NAH Bill B Home Builders Index is out and then building starts and permits. And then we've also got other bits and pieces like Michigan sentiment on Friday, first preliminary estimate of that, that's pretty closely watched, and other bits across the UK and Europe. On top of that, of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on the price action, particularly the S&P 500, that range we mentioned, but also US 10-year bond yields, which failed to push through their 200-day moving average over the course of the last couple of weeks and have eased, out, eased off from that level. So that's it from us. That's your morning market hit for Monday 15th of January. Thank you for listening. Please do subscribe to these videos on YouTube. Simply click on the subscribe button, like and share on social media, or follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and or Facebook. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Trade well.